So we've already had a look at the DOM. And what we want to do now is we want to target certain DOM elements and then we want to change their HTML content. So you can see with this project, I have a div element and I have an input. And that's because I want to show you how to change the content of certain elements because they are a little bit different. For example, most elements have their content defined in between their opening and closing tags. But in other instances, you can have an input and the content of that input is defined by an attribute. So they are a little bit different, but most elements have the content in between their opening and closing tags. And in other situations, you will have an attribute that defines the element's content. So what I want to do first of all, is I want to take a look at the object to do with this div element right here. So I'm going to say document because you always, when you want to work with the DOM, you call up the document object. And then I'm going to get an element by its ID because this div element has an ID and that ID is change me. And again, it is case sensitive for your IDs as well. So you'll notice the M in me is capitalized. And you'll notice right there, the M is capitalized. So if we take a look at this object, we have two properties that we can manipulate to easily change the content of this div element. One is the inner HTML and the other one is inner text. Now, depending on what you want to do, you want to manipulate either one or the other of either the inner HTML or the inner text. Now at the moment, you will notice that inner HTML looks exactly the same as inner text. And that's because inner text shows the visible text to the user. And inner HTML looks at the HTML content of the div. And well, the inner HTML content of the div is just simply a string saying hello world. So they both look exactly the same. So right now, I want to modify the text of this div element, which can easily be done by simply targeting that object that resembles that DOM element. And then we want to say dot inner text. So we're modifying the inner text property. And then I can pass in a string, let's say goodbye. So that will just change the visible text. And when I hit return, the JavaScript JIT compiler will go off to the DOM because it will detect that change on that particular object. It will detect the change and it will tell the DOM to re-render itself, which it did. It re-rendered this div element right here. So that's a nice way of changing the text. But what if you wanted to actually, let's say, add in a HTML element. Let's say I want to add in a span before my text. Well, you couldn't do it with the inner text property. Let me show you. If I add in a span element like so, will it create a HTML element? I'll just put X in there like so and hit return, which again, the JIT compiler goes over to the DOM render and says, look, re-render yourself or re-render this element. And it's re-rendered the element, but the issue is it's not actually created the span elements. What it did was it escaped or nullified certain characters, namely the opening and closing lesser than and greater than characters. So it might look like HTML right here. But if you actually, let's say, right click and copy the element right here and paste it into a text editor, this is actually what it produced. It simply nullified the less than. So that's what the ampersand LT stands for, less than, and then ends with a semicolon. That's an escaped version of the less than, and then you have the escaped version of the greater than, GT, greater than, character. 
That's that character right there. So it nullified those characters. So in a text is actually very good for, let's say, if you wanted to display code to the user. But if you didn't want that, if you actually wanted a HTML element, then you couldn't use the inner text property because it will escape the characters. So I'm going to change that to the goodbye string. And let's clear the console because now I want to affect the inner HTML and HTML must be all in capitals, which is hypertext markup language. So because it's an acronym, all of it is capitalized in a HTML equals. And then we want to pop in a span like so. Now, when you use in a HTML, it will not escape. It will absolutely not escape your lesser than and greater than characters, which means that it takes effect in HTML. So if I hit return now, you will notice that the span tags do not actually show up to the user, which means that now we have a span element within this div. Now also don't forget your assignment operators and that assignment operator that polymorphed. So if we take a look at this and I go to the console right now, we can actually say, well, instead of replacing everything inside of the inner HTML, that's using the regular assignment. So if I just replace this again with a string, then this DOM element would just contain a string. But what if I wanted to add content in without changing the existing content using in a HTML? Well, the simple answer is you use your assignment operators. So instead of just saying equals, which means delete whatever is currently in the inner HTML property, the content within the div and replace it with whatever I have here. Instead, you can say, look, don't delete it but add on to it. So you can say plus equals. You can do that with inner text and in HTML, not a problem. And of course, we know that the plus operator polymorphs depending on the data that it's given, such as string and a number, number of string, string and string and a number and a number. So we know that it polymorphs. So if I say goodbye and then let's, uh, in fact, get rid of that now because we're not going to delete the string goodbye. Let's pop in a span like so, and put the value of X in there so we can see it. So you'll notice that what it did was it took the existing content plus, plus the content. So take the existing content and then add on to it the content that I've written here. So what it did was it just added the span onto the end of the content plus equals. It concatenated it onto the end. And if that will open up for me, there it is. There's the span. Now, what if I very quickly wanted to modify, let's say the newly created span and change its content? Well, I don't want to affect any of the other content in the div. Let's say I have a whole paragraph here, so I really don't want to, you know, have that copied out and so forth. What I want to do is I just want to affect the content, this X right here, that is in the span. So if we open this up, there's the span. And how would I affect the content? Because this span doesn't have any unique identifier on it. It has no ID attribute. It doesn't even have any class attributes. So what I'm going to do here is use the standard CSS selector string. So I can simply just clear the console, type in DIR to give me the true form and say document dot query selector all and again make sure selector and all have a capital and then you need to type in the string that is going to target a specific element so i have an element with the id of change me and then i want to look inside of that element with that id and look for a span element like so you can even use the direct child selector. So that means that the span element must be a direct child of the element with the idea of change me, which it is. Don't forget this right here is a direct child of that div element. Now that wasn't necessary, but I thought I'd just show it you. But you know about your CSS selectors, hopefully. But if I hit return, you'll notice we get an array 
and the zero index of the array is the span that is being targeted. Now I can change its inner HTML. So what you will usually see is document query selector all and then don't forget it's returning an array. This is an array and it has a zero key in it. So the way we access it is we put in the square bracket. So just think of it like this goes and fetches this array. So this is now like pointing to an array and then you put in your square brackets. So we're pointing to an array and in the square brackets we want to target a specific element in the array which is one of the objects that resemble the DOM element that we want to modify which is zero. This is very important because you can't just say dot inner HTML because you're trying to find an inner HTML property on this node list array that was returned. Well, there is no inner HTML property here at all. So in fact, what you will do is get an error. You first must target the elements object and then you can say in a HTML. So I want to first enter the key or go to the key zero, unlock that box right there. So we unlock it and then we can go and take a look at in a HTML or in a text. Let's just do in a text for this one and then say equals and we'll say change me. Done. So I'm going to end with the semicolon, hit return and you'll notice that what it did was it found that span element like we did here. We accessed the object for that span element. I can hover over it and see right there, it's selected in my browser. So I know that this object, this one right here, is that object. And then I say dot inner text. So I'm targeting the inner text property and then simply changing the value. And I'm not doing the plus equals, you could do the plus equals if you wanted to, but I just said equals, which means take whatever content is inside of this element, the inner text, remove it, and then change it with this inner text. And it did exactly that, and it told the DOM to re-render, and you'll notice that's exactly what the DOM did. So there we go, that's how you can change the inner HTML and inner text of standard elements. And as I said, most elements just have your basic opening and closing tags. And in between those two opening and closing tags, you have the content. Now we want to just move on to input elements in particular, because most input elements do not have an opening and closing tag like we have here with the span and with the div. With the input elements, they're normally what's called self-closing tags, which means they close off themselves. They're just a self-contained tag and they have a few attributes that give it definition. Well, in this instance, we want to target this input, which has an ID, luckily. And so we want to target that ID and we want to change the value. And the way that we actually change the value is we access the value attributes. So these are all attributes, ID, type, value. And you'll mostly find that in JavaScript, attributes are simply properties on an object. So it's nice and easy just to change this. But we can change the value, for example, click you. There you go. It just changed to the value that I asked. So let's see if we can do this in JavaScript. So again, we need to go grab the object that is in fact related to this element. So we have the element with the ID of event click, which is case sensitive. And then if I was to actually take a look at this now, let's go ahead and print out an interactive list. And as I said, with most attributes, they are actually properties right here. So there's all of our events and your five value will be somewhere at the bottom. There we go. Value. So you can see that your attributes right here, such as ID, again, that's a property. You'll have type as well. If you take a look through this, let's have a look, tag and so forth. There it is, type. So you have all of your attributes basically as properties on objects. That's how JavaScript interprets it all. And so what I want to do is change the value property to something different. So let's target that object. And then once we've 
got that object, we can say dot value. So now we're fetching that object and opening it up. And then we're saying go grab the value property. And I want to reassign its value. Again, as it is a string, you have your assignment operators. So you could even do the plus equals, which means take the existing content and then add to it. And then assign that value. So let's do the plus equals just for argument's sake. Again, single or double quotes, it doesn't matter. And we could just say, yup, just add a space in there. So it took the existing content, click you, and it added the space, yup. There we go. And once we executed it, it told the DOM to re-render this element and it said, click you yup. So that's how it all works. And again, it polymorphs as well, even with let's say numbers, then that number will be added onto the string. So it polymorphs, it adapts to the data that it is given. So there you go. That is how to modify and change content in the DOM.